I have a master's degree in media and culture, and I've studied horror professionally for many years now. So most of my friends think I engage with horror media like this. When in reality, it's more like this. Very undignified. When I sit down to watch a scary movie, I want more than anything to be scared. And I want a director to pull out every trick that they've got in order to get me thoroughly spooked. A great way to do that is with jump scares. There's a particular artistry to making a thoughtful and intense jump scare, and basically all of the best horror movies use them. Despite this, they've developed a bad reputation the last few years, and this film technique is in danger of disappearing entirely. I hate to see it, because I love jump scares for pretty much the same reason most people hate jump scares. A good jump scare can make a horror movie better. And the science backs me up on this. The jump scare is an old cinematic technique. It's generally accepted that Orson Welles and editor Robert Wise had the first jump scare, this bit with the bird and Citizen Kane. Another early contender is the original Cat People, with a cut that became known as the Luton Bus, named for the movie's producer. The director, Jacques Tourneur, wanted the movie to stand in opposition to schlocky, low-class universal horror pictures, the Marvel movies of their day. Cat People was made to be intelligent and in good taste. And remember that, because it's going to be important in about 80 years. Jump scares have a very particular cinematic purpose. And while Citizen Kane isn't a horror movie, Orson Welles was absolutely using a jump scare in the same way that modern horror movies do. Here's Orson Welles himself explaining his intentions. Everybody remembers that one scene where you suddenly cut to a cockatoo screeching just before... That was to wake up the audience. <laughs> It's as That's the as entire that. significance of the cockatoo. I just can't get a <laughs> I can't get a pretentious answer out of you. Jump scares have two aspects: a loud noise called a stinger, and a quick on-screen appearance. First, something jumps out at you, then you jump in reaction. Jump scares often, but not always, involve some kind of build-up, like a period of silence before the stinger or a camera angle with a lot of negative space to imply something will appear in this area. As the audience strains to hear and struggles to make sense of this space, they experience a heightened sense of awareness and tension, which the jump scare breaks. This jump scare in The Exorcist 3 has a full four minutes of buildup. The static scene lulls you into a comfortable place and then delivers this incredible scare. It's one of the best, most memorable parts of the movie. The artistry. The director might draw your attention to something innocuous, like these hanging dolls in The Sixth Sense, only to scare you somewhere else on the screen. It can be hard to appreciate the artistry of the setup slash payoff when you're, well, you know, too busy screaming and throwing popcorn everywhere, but a great jump scare has finesse. After all, the basics of a jump scare, loud noise, sudden presence, these are easy to set up and almost guarantee a reaction. Even a child yelling boo from the shadows can scare someone, and children are notoriously harmless. There isn't any exact science that proves jump scares make horror movies better, but the paper Dissociable Neural Systems for Unconditioned Acute and Sustained Fear does suggest that the brain experiences different kinds of fear depending on what's provoking it. A cute, threatening event, like when Benicula attacks... No, no, sorry, that's an acute threatening event, like a jump scare makes your brain react differently than sustained fear, the state your brain is in before a threat is actually encountered. The findings suggest that sustained fear increases your focus. You're searching for a threat that has not yet arrived. The reactionary impact of an actual threat affects your emotions, your desire for action. The threat is here, and you want to respond accordingly. A good horror movie will move you between these modes, rather than keeping you stuck in one state. The moments after a jump scare, when you're a little embarrassed or even annoyed or, I don't know, aroused maybe, are an important mental break between sections of sustained fear. It resets your brain a little before ramping back up to true fear. It's like edging, but for horror. 
the way jump scares have been deployed has changed over time, and I think that's a big part of why people don't like them. In these early examples, they were basically used as transitions, and I will say I am pretty glad that that has been phased out. Can you imagine if iMovie came with, like, fade to black, slide left, bird screech? After that, they became mid-climax shockers, deployed with plot purpose at the height of the film's intensity. Like this moment in Psycho. Eventually, directors realized that they could put jump scares where the audience wasn't expecting them, like after the climax, and get an even bigger reaction. The End of Carrie is an early, particularly influential example. And over time, those jump scares migrated to earlier in the movie, spicing up the otherwise mundane exposition. Since this is usually before the monster killer ghost has really appeared, the jump scare became a fake out, an easy fright, dragged from the audience without really being earned. A lot of directors took the power of the jump scare for granted and started sticking them in willy-nilly. And when the audience members inevitably react to it, it can make them feel silly, tricked, powerless. And I'm fine with that because, you know, what else is horror for? It's not supposed to make you feel powerful. As a genre, it's meant to challenge you and make you feel uncomfortable mentally, emotionally, and yeah, sometimes physically. But I'm not the only person watching horror movies, and my opinion isn't the only one that matters. I know. <laughs> and in particular, the rise of prestige horror, or elevated horror, has done a lot to threaten the jump scare with total oblivion. When Jordan Peele rightfully won the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay for Get Out, it proved that horror could be culturally important. It's caused a huge influx of new fans and filmmakers, bringing new perspectives and styles to the genre. It's a pretty thrilling time to be a horror fan. But horror is inherently a low-class genre, barely a step above pornography. And there's some overlap. To find a compromise between all horror is low quality and this horror movie is high quality, the idea of elevated horror arose. It's like horror, but good. Ah? Fans of elevated horror are excited by the social commentary, atmospheric menace, and complex monster metaphors that the genre offers. But they're not always watching horror to be scared. And that's kind of a big shift in audience expectations. And director expectations have shifted too. The hypothetical long shot chance for an Oscar is a great incentive to make elevated horror. But what even is elevated horror? What makes a horror elevated or prestige is almost entirely based on audience perception. I would dispute almost any textual definition you tried to put in front of me. I would knock it out of your hand like a plate of old spaghetti. One of the casual definitions I see is the lack of jump scares or gore or whatever this slick and titane is. It's the easy line to add to a review to let the audience know that this horror movie is good. As classic horror markers, these are considered low class, or in poor taste, or just really gnarly, like for real Julia Ducarno, what the fuck? The tendency of horror to wallow in the body and all the viscousness of it is part of why it's considered low class. And at least in American movies, violence is fine, but God forbid you show the physical consequences of it. But class markers, in horror, in media, or just in broad capitalism, are largely arbitrary and constantly shifting. Remember 80 years ago when elevated horror cat people used jump scares? And it did elevate cat people. But in the long run, it cheapened the jump scare. Directors have been all too willing to abandon low culture markers in the chase for respectability. It's like the opposite of a deal with the devil. An agreement with angels. Jump scares have a place in some horror movies, and they don't have a place in others. It's a totally legitimate style choice to have them or not. But they've gotten such a bad reputation that even horror movies that have no hope of being elevated horror have started to abandon them. I'm talking like rubber mask, buckets of blood horror movies, the kind that really need to use every kind of cheap fun scare they have. But even elevated horror shouldn't be above the jump scare. In my opinion, 
One of the failings of this subgenre is that when an elevated horror movie falls short, it's really boring. It just sort of plods along at the same pace. No ups and downs, no shifting brain modes. And it's because it has abandoned tried and true scare tactics like the jump scare. Without the payoff of even an easy startle, they can't shake any kind of reaction out of me. So not only am I not getting nourished, I'm not even getting fed. I go to horror movies explicitly to be scared. When I buy a ticket, I know I'm potentially in for some screams, some discomfort, and if I'm very, very lucky, some lingering nightmares. I'm hoping the people that made the movie will do their very best to terrify me. And if I can't get a cheap thrill in the back of a theater from a guy in a rubber mask jumping out from behind some plywood, well, what's even the fucking point? Hello, and thank you for watching this video on jump scares, a cinematic technique I love. This video represents probably about 30% of my total thoughts and feelings on jump scares. Uh, the, the interesting 30%. The other 70% I think is just screaming. And an extra special thank you to Alice, Hollis Roswell, Danielle Welch, Lloyd Weldy, and Common Opponent, who, as a group, hid in the back seat of my car and jump scared me so bad I drove straight through a combination KFC Taco Bell. It is now just a Taco Bell and a KFC. Thank you. If you like this video and you want to support me in continuing to make more work and also see some fun background videos, you can do that on my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash thejenna. That's a great place to find like outtake videos and behind the scenes images and things that I cut from videos. Uh, certain tiers get to vote on what my next video will be. That's what this video was. The people, enough people voted for it that I made this video on jump scares and hopefully it was good and you liked it. If you don't want to support me on Patreon, maybe you can't, that's fine. Uh, you can always just like and comment on this video and maybe share it with some people that you think would enjoy it. But if you just want to like support my work because this is the sort of thing that you would like to see more of on YouTube, you can do that. Patreon.com slash the Jenna. Ooh.